Here we have a cast iron spider. Here we have a spider of the kind that I sell in the shed therapy shop. Here is a lovely Diston horn anvil. If you don't find one of them, don't worry, any old hammerhead will do with a slight bevel ground upon the side of it. Here's another hammer which I've ground a slight bevel on the side. I will use all of these in this demonstration. And a hammer, both of these hammers work fairly well. You want the hammer to be smaller than the width of two teeth. You don't want the hammer by mistake hitting two teeth at once. And if you're getting the impression that use whatever tools you've got to hand, that's dead right. So, I'll start with these tools, putting the long arm of the spider against this tooth, which is set down. I offer the spider up and listen to see if it rocks. I can hear a slight click there. So holding onto the spider like that, taking my anvil, putting it under the saw, I'm going to hit the tooth like that. I check the spider again and see how far the tooth has moved. Needs to go a bit further. The tooth is about three millimeters proud of the bevel. The bevel is the fulcrum point. There's no rocking there so that tooth is set. I move to the next. There's a slight rock there so this doesn't need much striking. Now this is a rather horrible anvil. It's rather rusty. You'd guess I've made it in a hurry. I've got a better anvil. I'll use this one. There's no rock so that's good. There's a little rock. That's good. You can see that this process is very swift. Needs a little more. Just because I want you to experiment, imagine you only had a hammer like that as your anvil. In the event you set a tooth too far, The, the saw spider will rock in this axis and in that case what I do is put the anvil underneath it like that and hit about three or four millimeters back from the tip of the tooth to flatten it. You can try doing that as well. That's good.